Everything in life is fabricated. It's all put together. And it just doesn't just fall together on its own. A lot of effort goes into putting things together. And because we have to put so much effort into life, we want to make sure that our effort is well directed, our energy is well spent. Otherwise, you can waste whole lifetimes of a lot of effort, a lot of hard, hard work, and have really nothing to show for it. And as the Buddha pointed out, that the best use of our efforts is to find those openings within the whole fabricated system where it opens out to something unfabricated. Everything else is fabricated. He says, look at as a means. Even our intermediate goals along the path are means to a further end. So we have to learn how to look at them just as that, as means. This would sound selfish if it weren't for the fact that our goal is one that is designed to give no harm to anyone at all. Just the fact that you're born here. Look at those reflections on the four requisites. Once you're born, all of a sudden you become a big consumer. Food, clothing, shelter, medicine. Now one of the nicest things you can do for anyone is to get yourself out of the system. Because think of all the suffering that goes into keeping you fed and clothed and sheltered and making sure your health stays well. All the work from the plant on up, the people who have to grow the plants, the people who have to buy the plants, transport the plants, so you have food to eat. Someone once traced a sweatshirt from, gosh, I think it was Iranian cotton. It was back, excuse me, it was back East cotton through Iranian mills, and then made its way to South Korea, and finally showed up in a Gap warehouse in Kentucky. That's just clothing. It was all over the world a couple times before it finally gets to you. So the fact that you have this body means that you're constantly consuming. So the issue is how to get the best use out of the body, because someday you're going to have to throw it away. If you don't let go of it nicely, it's going to push you out. And before you go, many times you have to put up with disease and all the problems that come as you begin to lose your grip. This part of the body stops functioning, that part stops functioning. So you want to learn how to look at the body not as an end in and of itself, but as a means. This is what a lot of the teaching is about. On the one hand, learn how not to expect too much out of the body. If you expect too much happiness, too much well-being out of the body, you're making unrealistic demands on it. It's the same with relationships. If you're expecting a relationship to provide you with all the happiness you want in the world, it's going to be a difficult relationship. And we find many times, self-consciously, that's the kind of relationship we have with our own bodies. So learn how to look at it in its true nature, so that you're not surprised when all of a sudden it grows ill and does funny things as it grows ill. There was once a time in time we visited a hospital. And there was a man in his 60s who had developed liver cancer, and he didn't know how much longer he was going to live, and he wanted to make some merit with some monks. So we went to visit him. We talked about how he should meditate, but he kept complaining about the fact that, unusually for his generation in Thailand, he'd been a, a fitness freak. 
and had been very proud all the way up through his fifties. He had st stayed slim and trim as all of his other friends had gotten paunchy. And then all of a sudden he got cancer of the liver and his stomach bloated up. He felt very embarrassed about the whole thing. If you learn to expect that out of the body, it's not such a shock and it's not such a problem when it actually comes. This is why one of the reasons we have that contemplation of 32 parts of the body. Realizing there's the potential for all kinds of stuff to happen in the body. Realizing that's the nature of the body. As long as you latch on to it as yours and develop a certain amount of pride around it, your attitude towards the body, whether it's through the exercise or the, the nice natural foods you feed it or whatever it is, you're setting yourself up for a problem. If you look at it as an goal in and of itself. If you see it as a means to a higher end, then you're in a lot better shape. So when you find the mind tempted to go out and look at the body, and it's, many times it's amazing how as your life gets more and more simplified as a meditator, you can, you can get more and more obsessed with the body, making sure that it's healthy, making sure that it's getting the right food, whatever. And there has to be a sense of proportion in all of that. So that you can use the body for other things. After all, it is one of the foundations of mindfulness, one of the frames of reference. And it's an important one. You have to learn how to be on friendly terms with it. It's funny, we contemplate it, filled with all sorts of unthink, unclean things, and the same would be friends with your body. Well, that's part of being friends with a person, is being very clear about their shortcomings, so you don't demand too much out of them. But the body does have a lot of strength. It's a good place to stay. As long as you're alive, you can take it as a frame of reference. As the Buddha said, it's one of the ways of having an island for yourself. As he was dying, he told his monks, you can't depend on the Buddha. Can't depend on the person of the the Tathagata, because like every other person, his body is going to have to go. So he reminded the monks, all of his followers, to make themselves as an make themselves an island. So how do you do that? Take the body in and of itself as your frame of reference, ardent, alert, and mindful, putting aside greed and distress with regard to the world. That's one of the four. In other words, you take the body just as it is, as you're immediately experiencing it. That's one way of doing it. Staying with the breath, coming in, going out, being with the sensation of the breath. Or you can go analyze the parts of the body, the elements of the body, the warmth, which is the fire element, the motion in the body, which is the wind element the cool and liquid sensations, the water element, and the solid and heavy ones, the earth element, trying to bring them into a balance, realizing that's a way of keeping yourself anchored in the present moment. One of the reasons we do this is because there are not that many narratives around these things. The breath has one narrative. It's in, and then it's out, and it's comfortable, and it's not, and that's about it. It's not much of a narrative. And it's a great dissolver for the narratives the mind spins for itself. And once it spins the narratives, and then it catches itself in its own web, like a spider that gets caught in its own web. Someone once said, the universe isn't made out of atoms, it's made out of stories. Well, the universe of our lives is made out of stories, and many times they're really oppressive stories. Stories that create a lot of suffering for ourselves and for the people around us. And we allow ourselves to get s caught up in them. A good way to cut through those narratives is just to stay with the sensation of the body in and of itself here in the present moment. It helps get you, get you out of the narratives and realize how unreal they are. And again, see all the effort that goes into those narratives. 
and then what do you get out of them? A lot of times it's suffering. There are narratives that are useful, but it's important that you put yourself in a position where you can choose which narratives you're going to get involved with and which ones you're not. Otherwise, you're subject to everything that the mind spins out. So whatever way you have of making yourself comfortable with the sensation of the body in the present, working with the breath, working with other parts of the body, working with the elements, regard that as your island, as your safe place outside of the narratives. That way the mind has a foundation. Once it has a foundation, then it's not knocked over by things. Events in the, in the world can go past you, they can go through you, as long as you're not catching on to things. The sense of the body can provide a larger context for all your experiences of the world. And once you have this sense of you're here in your foundation, and the experiences of the world are just that. They're sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tactile sensations. They're contained within this context of the body. This is not to deny that they have reality, but again, you know, your experience of color. How do you know that the sky is actually blue out there the way you, you see it? All of these objects of the senses, they're experienced here inside the context of the body. When you realize that, again, it helps make this context a lot stronger. The foundation gets a lot more deeply set. It's more all-encompassing, less likely to get knocked over by things. So the body is good grounding for concentration practice. And it's also a good object for insight practice, developing insight to the whole issue of what actions are skillful, which ones are not, which ones lead to suffering, what mental qualities lead to suffering, what mental qualities lead to the end of suffering, what assumptions pile on suffering, what assumptions are part of the path. The word sanya. has as one of its meanings assumptions, assumption, the way you label things. For example, the way you label pain. You can label it in some ways and it builds it up, makes it more and more of an issue. You can label it in other ways that cut through the issues. One way of dealing with pain, once the mind settles down and can actually look at pain and not feel it's threatened by it, is to ferret out when you have a feeling of pain. Okay, exactly which sensations are the pain sensations and which ones are the body sensations? Again, the four elements. Solidity, warmth, coolness, movement. We tend to glom the whole thing together, but when you start taking it apart and seeing it as specific, separate things, you begin to see how fleeting pain is, just like pleasure is. The actual sensation of the body is more lasting, but the pains come and go, come and go, come and go, sometimes very quickly in succession. And even right there in the part of the body that seems to be nothing but a mass of pain, you start ferreting out the different sensations to see what precisely is the pain there, and which are other sensations that have gotten glued to the pain somehow by your labeling. But if you label them in a different way, they get unglued. And instead of your hope, say your hip or your back or your leg being a whole mass of pain, you realize it's just these fleeting sensations of pain together with other fleeting sensations, which makes it a lot less threatening. It also shows you the power of your perceptions. That what you thought was a given was actually something that you had glued together yourself. which makes you want to turn around and look at this whole process of labeling things in the mind.
in all these cases, you're using the body as an aid in the practice. Which is your pursuit of true happiness, if you're looking at it as a, a goal in and of itself. It's going to disappoint you, big time. But if you learn to use it as a tool, you find that the happiness you develop, if you use it wisely, gets more and more solid, more and more secure. And as you get more self-reliant in this way, you lean less on other people. Your efforts are more productive of happiness, both for yourself and for the people around you, because you spend less time weighing yourself down with unnecessary stress and suffering. So developing a balanced attitude towards the body is a very important thing. And we have different tools, as you've as you've noticed, some tend to tend to emphasize the shortcomings of the body; others emphasize the importance of the body. And instead of saying you like some tools and don't like other tools, remember that tools have their function; they have their time and their place. And the more tools you master, the better off you are, because you have tools for dealing with any situation, whatever comes up. <laughs>